Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, turn into your, your King James Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. thought we'd change it up a little bit today. I've been thinking about this, and I've been praying about it. Uh, today is laundry day, so I get to go to town. I always go to town during the winter to do laundry, because out here we've had plenty of water. I probably could do laundry out here, but habit is, is during the summer I do laundry in town at the uh, laundromat. And uh, because we sometimes run low on water during the summer. But this year we've gotten tons of rain. It was sprinkling outside just a few minutes ago. When I went to check on the chickens like I do every morning. Speaking of chickens, animals. So I put a, God put it on my heart to want to talk about animals. So I want to talk to you, brothers and Christ. I want to go through the scriptures, what God has shown me. And I'm going to give you um, something that's not hardcore, like a Bible Clearly, I'm not saying the Bible says this is absolute truth, and if you don't believe it, you're already right with God or something like that. This is more like I'm going to show you what the Bible says, and I'm going to give you what I my theory. Okay, this is just a theory study where we're going to use a lot of truth, and then I want to know what you, brothers and sisters of Christ, what God has shown you when it comes to this subject of animals. Okay, then, now, and in that day. All right. And I put day in capital letters because for those of you who know your Bible and everything, um, the day of the Lord in that day. Right. So I'll be going through it. Okay. Now what really got me set off on this is I watched a TV, a clip of a TV program. I'm going to use the word program because that's what television is. It's about programming. And it was a little clip that showed kids arguing with a priest. It looked like a Jesuit priest. Black suit, white collar, Jesuit priest. And they were arguing over the, about how Noah's Ark couldn't have really happened, and, and this is why. And they were arguing about the animals. They would, they would have eaten each other, and, and uh, they were there for 40 days and whatnot. And, and the priest there was just stumbling all over the place because most priests don't know, couldn't, uh, find, was it, couldn't, as a brother in Christ said, couldn't find the Gospel of Luke without an index. Okay. They don't care about the King James Bible. Okay? It's not about thus saith the Lord, it's about thus saith man. Okay? You can be as God's knowing good and evil. So I watched that and I was like, Lord, if someone was to walk up and ask me that question, a little child, like 12 years old child, or even a grown up walks up and asks me, how did they do it? How did God do it and everything? How would I respond? Thus saith the Lord. That's how we're, trained, we're, we're taught that this book, Brothers and Sisters Christ, is our foundation in all matters of faith and practice. Right? When someone asks us a question, we're supposed to be ready to give an answer. That's why we read our Bibles every morning and every night. I listen to the Old Testament to the New Testament, like I said before, with Alexander Scorby, because there's a lot of words in here that is kind of hard to pronounce properly, like names and places. But after listening to Alexander Scorby, he's helped me to pronounce them. Okay. You don't change this because you can't pronounce it. You learn to pronounce it. Okay. So going through that and reading the New Testament from uh, Matthew uh, to Revelation every morning and every night with, uh, before I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning, the Lord said, hey, let's do a Bible study on this. So in order to do this and put it in its proper context, we need to go all the way back to the beginning. So that's why I said turn to Genesis if I did, turn to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. We're going to talk about the state of the animals before the flood. Okay? Because this is important. Genesis 1, 26, we read, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. The key word there is dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. They have dominion. People say, that's still today, that's still today. Uh, I'm going to show that that's still not for today. That was before the flood. Okay. Jump down to Genesis 1.28, it says again, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion key word, dominion, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And the thing is, is 
Uh, turn to uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. We read about Adam. What's going on with Adam and God when he's showing him all these animals and letting Adam what? Name the animals. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam would call every living creature, that was the name thereof. Now, I'm not adding to scripture, I'm talking about me. If I was standing there and I was naming all the animals, I'd look at them and I'd look them over and I'd touch them, I'd pet them. Well, today we'd like to pet them. I love petting animals. Okay, I got my chickens. Uh, there's a petting zoo up in Bandon, Oregon, that has all kinds of animals that run around in the open area where you walk from section to section to look at animals behind the cages. But there's a lot of animals that just roam. A lot of deer, donkey, um, goats, and just a lot of different animals that just roam. And, they, and they're used to you feeding them, so they follow you all over the place. And me, I want to look at them, pet them, see them. And then say, okay, I'm going to name this one such and such. Okay, you look it over, you look it up and down. Hmm, it's a little different from the last one. I'm going to name this such and such. Okay, but the point I'm making is they're friendly. And the other point that I'm making, which will come together towards the end of this study, what I'm making is, is I believe before the flood, all animals were herbivores. They weren't meat eaters. Okay. Adam had dominion over all the creatures and named them. They did not fear man. Remember the key word dominion? And they didn't fear man. Okay. Remember the first person killed, we read in the Bible, the first person killed isn't killed by an animal. You've heard of people being killed by animals today. And we're going to go over some times in the Bible that after the flood is when you start hearing how people are being killed by animals. Okay? And people are having to kill animals in, in self-defense. People are having to hunt animals for food. Okay, That's not mentioned before the flood. But the first person killed in Genesis 4.8, if you want to turn there, Genesis 4.8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and slew him. Now remember in the garden, when Adam and Eve fell, that G I believe it was Jesus, who is God, had to kill some lambs and made some clothes for them. So blood had to be shed, absolutely. But we see here, when it comes to after the fall, and they're exiled from the Garden of Eden, the blood that was shed was man shed and man's blood. Where's the animals attacking mankind? It's not there. They have dominion over all the animals still, and the animals are friendly. Okay, and let's contrast this because right now by itself it's just 100% theory, right? But when you start contrasting with all the different dispensations of how the Bible talks about animals in different dispensations, it all starts to come together. Okay, so after the flood, after the flood, okay, we're going to get into this. Now Noah, the whole story of Noah, getting the animals, God brings the animals, puts them on the ark. Remember, they're friendly. Man has dominion over them. Noah says, go sit over here. They go and sit over there. Today we have to train animals. Today we have to domesticate animals. I believe back then you didn't have to. Okay, you had uh, Cain and Abel. Abel was walking around. He was able to lead the flock. And he didn't have to worry about wolves like they do after the flood. Or lions. I believe they all ate herbs. So how are these animals allowed to be on the ark? for 40 days and 40 nights, and then months after that, as the flood was receding down, and not eat each other? Part of the answer is here, is we're going to read this, but I believe they were herbivores. Okay. And they, a man had dominion over them. God said you're under the authority of, of uh, he brought them all there, but you're under the authority of man, specifically Noah. Genesis 8.14 reads, And in the second month, on the seventh, and on the seven and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. And God spoke unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons and thy sons' wives with thee. Bring forth with thee every living thing that was with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. 
And Noah went forth and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with him. There's satanic movies out there that show, uh, I don't suggest watching it, but there's a satanic movie out there that shows Noah, his wife, and his three sons with no wives. And it's just very wicked. They can't follow scripture. The world always goes against the word of God. Okay. There were six, eight people on the ark. Eight people on the ark. Thirteen. Every beast, every creeping thing, every fowl, and whatsoever creeped upon the earth after their kind went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake, for the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing, as I have done. He let all the animals out. While the earth remaineth seed time, and harvest, and cold, and heat, and summer, and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Okay. And I almost stopped there, saying, okay, Lord, it doesn't really answer much. But the Lord's like, well, keep going. Okay. So Genesis. You keep going to chapter 9. I have a typo. I put Genesis 8.1 again. It's like, no, it's Genesis 9.1. If you keep going to the next chapter, Genesis 9.1, it says... And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Here's the key words here. Number two, verse two. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. The animals are no longer friendly. They've become wild. And upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea into your hands they are delivered they don't mankind no longer has dominion over them but in their hands they're delivered now all of a sudden we hunt okay we fish we hunt we have to defend ourselves and in their hands they're delivered God delivers us there's testimonies of people that God saved them from animal attacks okay they are delivered so before the flood, they have dominion over the animals, they're friendly, and I believe that they're, let's say vegetarian, but herbivores. After the flood, they're delivered into your hand. You don't have dominion over them, but they're delivered into your hand. They're not friendly anymore. They fear mankind. I have animals up here, deer and everything. They'll stand there and look at me as long as I walk, keep walking a path that stays so many feet away from them. They just look at me like, Eh, whatever. But if I start walking towards them, they run. Sometimes I can get really close, but they run. They fear mankind. I have chickens. I have, uh, there's other animals around here. Birds, pigeons. When they see me coming, they fly and take off. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself, but what did uh, Noah let go of the ark and come back? Today, unless you des domesticate a pigeon, it sees you. I have a whole horde of them that come over now for my bird feeder. They take off, and just, just the noise of them, just crazy noises. They just go crazy and take off. Okay. Your hands are delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Now you, can, now you can eat meat. Even as the green herbs have I given you all things, but flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. I believe when the animals became wild and started fearing man... That's when they started turning on each other. Started eating one another. You have people that, animals that are herbivores. Now you have animals that eat meat. Okay. Remember that Noah let go birds from, from the ark, and they came back to him in the ark. Okay. Those were not trained birds. Okay. Remember Adam naming all the animals. They were not afraid of him. But now all of a sudden, they are afraid. And a good example is, you don't have to turn there, but Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? Now stop there for a second. This is pre-flood. A snake that had feet before he lost his legs. A snake goes up to a woman and the woman's like, 
Oh. Huh. And she, uh, uh, Genesis 3, 2, she says, And the woman said to the serpent, Oh, there's a serpent here talking to me. Hey, what's going on? Oh, no, you know, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Oh, I'm just going to talk to it. Now, brothers and sisters Christ, after the flood, when you saw a snake come up, what did you do? If you saw a snake come up to you today, what do you do? Oh, it's a snake. I'm just going to talk to it. A venomous snake. Don't tell me wrong. This, this snake is venomous with his words, and not just venom, but with his words. No, I'm just going to talk to it. Oh, we're friends. Oh, no. You get away from it. Or you try to scare it away. Right? Before the flood, you did not fear snakes. But today, you fear snakes. The snakes are not friendly. Okay? And a lot of them are deadly. Okay? And we're going to go over, but right here we could stop and go, hmm, okay, that, that gives us those, our answers to a point that this is there's a difference between the animals before the flood and there's a difference between the animals after the flood. But what about the... Um, Animals eating meat, uh, herbs before the flood and eating um, meat, eating eating meat, flesh and drinking blood after the flood. Okay, this is where we're going to keep the study going a little bit further. Okay, we understand that the reason that the animals were able to survive on the ark, they were friendly. Man had dominion over them. They're friendly. But now let's get to this thing about why I believe in theory that they were herbivores before. The flood and after the flood things changed they became wild and, they, and some of them started eating meat okay. but before we get there after the flood is when we start hearing stories and let's go over some of those stories turn to Judges 14 5 man is killed by animals or attacked by them here's a list of different instances in the Bible where a man is attacked by an animal and has to kill it or a man kills an animal okay. Judges 14 5 it's not all of them but some of them Judges should be before Ruth. Judges 14.5 Judges 14.5 Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Tim, Timnath, Timnath and came to the vineyard of Timnath and behold, a young lion roared against him. And the Spirit of the Lord, capital S, Spirit of the Lord, came mightily upon him, and he rent him as he would have rent a kid, and he had nothing in his hand, but he told not his father or his mother what he had done. Here's an animal, here's a lion that's wild. Before the flood, wouldn't have to worry about it. After the flood, this lion is either hungry, and he goes to attack Samson. And what does Samson do? He has to kill it. Right. So here's an instance of an animal attacking a man. Being fearful of man to the point of, i got to defend myself or I'm hungry. And I'm attacking him. I turn to 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 23. Here's a good story. And he talking about Elisha, Elisha went up from thence unto Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city, and mocked him, and said unto him, Go up, thou bald head, go up, thou bald head. And he turned back and looked on them, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she-bears out of the wood, and tare forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he returned to Samaria. Two she-bears? There's men being killed by animals, children here in this case, but mankind's being killed by animals, and mankind's having to kill animals. It's in the Bible. But before the flood, we don't read about that. If I miss something, show me. I can miss something. Uh, Daniel chapter 6 verse 7, here's another one. Daniel chapter 6 verse 7, where they would use animals to punish people. Because they're wild. They'd use animals for sport. 
Uh, you have the Colosseum, the Roman Colosseum, where they had lions down there, and they'd throw Christians and feed them to the lions, and everybody would watch the lions kill Christians for sport. Okay. Daniel chapter 6, verse 7. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains, have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast to the den of lions. So there we see den of lions. Jump down to verse 12. We see it again. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree, and every man that shall ask a petition of God or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast to the den of lions? And the king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which alter not. Now you read the story of Daniel. He prays to God, the one true God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The Most High God that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had to bow down to. Okay. They cast him to a den of lions. Uh, down, jump down to 16, it says, Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel, and cast him into the den of lions. And now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou serve, service continually, he will deliver thee. And here we get into something important, brothers and Christ. God can get an animal to go back to being the way it was before, friendly. He's the one that got all the animals on the ark and told them, okay, you're under Noah's authority. Yes, that part's there. How many of us heard that teaching when it comes to Noah's ark? God did it because God made them all calm. But that's the way God made it when it was Adam and Eve. Okay, now in this dispensation, can God calm an animal? And make it where the animal sits there and acts friendly, acts different. He's no longer acting wild. He's not acting like we're used to, the way he should be acting. Absolutely. And this isn't the only story. But you get finished with uh, Daniel in the lion's den, the lions don't eat him. These are hungry lions that would eat anybody, but they don't touch Daniel. Okay. Here's another situation. First Kings. Go back to First Kings. All these situations with animals. First okay. Kings 13. First Kings 13, verse 22, 21. Let's go back to 21. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandments which the Lord thy God commanded thee, now you go back further, the story is, is there, God called a man out, a prophet, to go preach to a king. And he told him that in this area you're not to eat anything there, touch, uh, partake in eating or drinking anything there. You're to preach what I told you to preach and get out of there. And he goes in there, preaches, and on his way out, this other God, a prophet that claims the Lord told me, he lies, the Lord told me to grab you and pull you in here and get you to drink. Maybe the Lord did to tempt the man to see if the man would obey the Lord. So I can't really de deny it 100%. But the point is, is he gets persuaded to turn aside and he eats and drinks in that place that he wasn't supposed to. He went against the commandment of God. And now he has to send a third prophet to tell that, sec that original prophet that went to preach for the Lord what's going to happen. 29. But camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchres of thy fathers. It's going to be his punishment. Verse 23, And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. The lion didn't eat the carcass. The lion didn't eat the, um, the ass that stood by him. Okay? Donkey. The lion wasn't acting like a regular lion. He killed the man as God commanded, and now he's just sitting there. 
The donkey's not acting like a regular donkey. A donkey sees a lion kill a man, that donkey's going to run and flee. He's not acting right. See, God can't control animals. Verse 25, And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way. Men passed by. And the lion standing by the carcass. The lion didn't go after him. The lion didn't fear him and take off. And the lion didn't go after him. Wasn't acting normal. He was doing the work of the Lord. God can use animals. And they came and told it to the city where the old prophet dwelt. And if you keep reading the story, the prophet comes, gets him, and buries him with him in his own family sepulcher. But the prophet himself doesn't get buried with his own family from his own country, where he came from. Okay. Other points to make, uh, like I talked about, hunting food. You don't have to turn here, but Genesis 21.1. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see, he called Isaiah, or sorry, he called Esau, his elder son, and said unto him, My son, and he said unto him, Behold, here I am. And he said, Behold, now I am old. I know thou, I know not the day of my death. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons thy quiver and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. He's hunting. Before the flood, he could just walk out there, come here, dear. After the flood, they won't come near him. They fear man. He has to actually take a weapon and his bow, and he has to actually have to go hunt them down. Also, when you have livestock, okay, livestock attack for food. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 34. 1 Samuel 17. Samuel is after Ruth. We're way ahead of Ruth. Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. We read an instance where our flocks are being attacked by animals. And you got to defend them. Mm -hmm. 1 Samuel 17, verse 34. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took the lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered him out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. Before the flood, I believe you didn't have to worry about this. After the flood, you do. Now, where does it mention anything coming after Abel's flock? It doesn't. Now, like I said, I can't be 100% what they call dogmatic. I can't be 100%, but I believe that he had the flock. The flock followed Abel. Uh, Abel. The flock followed Abel around. I'm with him. Okay? They had dominion over the animals. I'm with him. I have to obey him. After the, after the flood, they weren't friendly anymore. Okay, th th talk about things killing my chickens. But let's just Christ, my chickens. Okay, around here, the things I have to worry about is raccoons trying to get my chickens. I have foxes around here that try to get my chickens. There for a while, I showed a video of it uh, way, way back when. A uh, bobcat uh, was coming in and killing my chickens. And I had to trap the bobcat. Okay. Uh, skunks sometimes, if you have baby chickens, like smaller chickens. If I had a neighbor that he didn't check everything when he locked his chickens up at night and a skunk had gotten in there and he had a, not baby baby chicks but they were, they're in the process, like I have four right now that are in the process of going from being a baby to being an adult but they're still fairly small and uh, skunks will kill them. Okay. So what I do, I have to build a cage for them to protect them. I have their place where they roost and sleep at night and I had to put a cage around them and lock them up at night to protect them. I would like to get some goats, um, but I have some neighbors that have goats and they had to do the same thing. The place where the goat sleeps at night, they had to have it fenced in. And uh, they have an even bigger fence in the area that the goats allowed to go around and eat because we have mountain lions around here. Okay? And we do have mountain lions that come in and go after the goats. You have to protect your livestock. Okay. Sometimes, I, I, I don't know, but sometimes I think maybe I have a problem with weasels. Uh, we do have uh, ferrets slash weasels up here that will sneak into the coop. 
if, you, if they find a hole, they find a hole that just doesn't have to be that big, they can sneak into the coop and they can start draining the blood from the chickens while they sleep and kill them in their sleep. Mm -hmm. We have to protect our, our livestock nowadays. Didn't have to before. Um, if you had wolves, you have sheep, you have wolves, you have lions, you have bears that you have to protect them from. Before the blood, I believe that all animals were vegetarians, you see, okay, herbivores. That's how all the animals could be on the ark and get along and not be tempted to eat one another. Okay? There's that factor. There's also the factor that God gave man dominion, and they were friendly to begin with, and gave him dominion over the animals. God played a fact, the biggest factor, but God made them herbivores, and he made them friendly, and gave... Um, uh, Noah, dominion over him. Okay. Genesis 6.18. Go back to Genesis 6.18. As I'm doing this study, I went back to Genesis 6.18. God gave me a good piece of information when it comes to this, why I believe they were herbivores. Okay. Genesis 6.18. Okay, why do you why turn here? I'm giving you time to turn. <laughs> That's why I do this. And I have my notes because I have things highlighted in my notes. Genesis 6.18. But with thee will I establish my covenant, and thou shalt come into the ark. This is before. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons before the flood, before they got into the ark. Thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Okay? He had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. They had wives. That's six. He had him and his wife. That's eight. Nineteen. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. Thou shalt be, they shall be male and female. But the fowls after their kind, of the cattle after their kind, of every creeping thing of the earth after his kind, two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive. And here's the key right here. Verse 21. And take thou unto thee all of all food that is eaten all food that is eaten, and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be food for thee and for them. Herbs. It'll be food for them. Grains. It'll be food for them. Wheat. It'll be good. For, that's what was grains. We have wheat. Uh, it's good for them, and it's good for you. Okay. Now today, when you look at this, be food for thee and food for them. They eat the same food, man and animal. All, they all were eating the same food. Now you look at all the animals he's talking about here. Uh, there's a lot of animals that eat different things. Bugs, insects, other animals today. Okay, And how they go about what they eat and everything. It's not the same. <laughs> there's stuff the animals eat I won't eat. Mm -hmm. But here, they're both eating the same thing. I believe it's herbs. Uh, grains, okay, plants, okay, whether they're dried up or whatever, they're eating plants, okay, hay, that kind of stuff, okay, now we don't eat hay, but we eat the, um, the wheat that comes from the hay, because you get the top part, which is the wheat, and then the bottom part is, is becomes hay for the livestock, okay, now remember the prophet that disobeyed God in 1 Kings 13, 24, when he was gone, when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way. And as the ass stood by, and the lion also stood by the carcass, and he beheld, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. I wanted to mention that one more time again, because I wanted to say that God's the one that has all the control. He gets all the glory. Remember what we said? We're supposed to give God all the glory and give him all the thanks. Okay? He made him herbivores. He could control them and give dominion, give, and he gave man dominion over the animals, and the animals were friendly. Okay. After the flood, they're not. God tamed animals at his will, and God had his hand in keeping the animals calm, and remember, man had dominion over, over them till after the flood when Moses led them out of the ark, and they went out, and eventually, in the process of time, became wild. They weren't friendly. Okay. 
Now, after the flood, animals became wild and started eating each other with the plants, is what I believe. Okay? Numbers 23, 24, you have to turn there, but it says, Behold, the people shall rise up as great lion and lift up himself as a young lion. He shall not lie down until he eat of the prey and drink the blood of the slain. They're using animals as an example with mankind. They're showing that animals are eating. They're drinking blood, which we're not allowed to, and they're eating flesh. Man does not have dominion over the animals like we did before the flood. People will keep saying that we have dominion over the animals. No, today mankind get killed by animals. Mankind has to kill animals in self-defense. That's why the Bible says, I, when we read about Moses, Noah, when they came out, I've delivered them unto you. You don't have dominion over them, but I've delivered them unto you. You have to hunt them for food. You have to protect your livestock from them. You have to protect yourself and your family from them. But I'll deliver them to you. It's one of those things like, you stay faithful to me, you believe in me, I will protect you. There's no cat, there's no rock like our rock. There's no lowercase g God like our capital G God. He's our protection. Okay. Now, what we have the dispensation of before the flood, and we have the dispensation after the flood. After the flood, clear up to uh, what I believe the catching away of the body of Christ today, and to the catching away of the body of Christ. What about the time of Jacob's trouble? Okay, man, man does not have dominion over the animals like we did before the flood today. Before, not afraid of us. Now, they're afraid of us. What about the time of Jacob's trouble? Turn to Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. What's going to happen? So they go from being friendly to being scared of us to what does the Bible say? Revelation 6, 8. This is coming. Revelation chapter 6, verse 8. And look, and I behold a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword people, mankind, to kill mankind with the sword, with hunger. I mean, we see it today. There's a worldwide um, famine that's being orchestrated. Get preparing for the way of the time of Jacob's trouble. I don't believe we'll be here. God's going to call us home any day now. Are you ready? That blessed hope. Are you ready? There'll be in some other studies. But kill with hunger, to kill uh, with death, people dying, uh, talks about um, pestilence, diseases. And here's for us for this study. With the beasts of the earth. So you have animals that go from being Friendly, we have dominion over them. They're, they eat um, plants. To after the flood, where they're no longer fr friendly, they they fear they fear mankind. They're fearful of mankind. Okay, uh, man does not have dominion over them, but God will deliver them unto you. There's times where God will just deliver them unto you. Okay, God will provide the meat. He said they hold the vegetation and the meat. He'll provide. Okay. So today, they're unfriendly. They don't hate us, but they're unfriendly. And we have to hunt them. We have to protect our livestock from them. Sometimes when they get hungry enough, I've had stories up here uh, in Medford, uh, Oregon, of bears where they got hungry. They, they left and came into the city looking for food. And they attacked people, usually little children. And but they're not predominantly, they don't go out of their way to come after us. They either have to be starving, or mankind has to mess with them. Okay, they're hungry, looking for food that, in the wrong place, or mankind's going after them. Okay, like I said, I've seen animals around here, they look at me, who cares? If I try to go near them, then they run. They're like, oh, it's just him, and I'm walking past. But if I start walking towards them, they run. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, <clears throat> I didn't bring my drink with me. In the time of Jacob's trouble, though, they are going to be man's enemy. They're going to be used to kill mankind. Okay. What did it say there again? We'll read it again. 
and with the beast of the earth, to kill with sword, to kill with hunger, to kill with death, and to kill with the beasts of the earth. They're not only not going to be friendly, they're no longer going to fear man in the time of Jacob's trouble. They're going to go after man. Okay, all the animals are going to start turning on mankind in that time period. Go ahead. So, so animals will look at mankind as enemy. They will no longer be a, fr be a friend nor be scared of us. Okay, imagine uh, Victoria, my mentor Schnauzer, imagine her just all of a sudden turning on you. Now there's a disease that they get, and I forgot my brain, sometimes um, where they start frothing at the mouth, where they'll just turn on animals, anybody, they're just going crazy, period. But I'm talking about animals turning on men. They're not diseased, it's just they're turning on men. Having a dog, your own dogs turn against you. The birds, like when I see a flock of those pigeons, I go out there and scare them, and they all just go crazy and they fly away. Imagine a man walking out there to scare them, and they all just look at them. And then they all just fly at them, charging them, and start attacking them. I know they've made Hollywood movies and whatnot. Stay away from the movies. I'm talking biblical. They will, animals will be used to kill mankind in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? But, you, but we're going to see first circle. Okay, what happens after the time of Jacob's trouble? What will the animals be like in the day of the Lord? When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, wipes out that 300 man, million man army with just his word, goes out like a double-edged sword, and wipes them out, and he goes to rule and reign for a thousand years. What's it going to go back to being like? Remember, in the time of Jacob's trouble, the earth is, is transformed. The mountains that used to be here are valleys, and valleys are mountains, and everything is, is moved around. Okay. I believe that it goes back to being like the time before the flood. Even the lifespan, people living, uh, Adam living to be 933, I think it was. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, he lived over 900 years. Okay, things are gonna the the earth and things are gonna go back. And how do we know this? In Isaiah 11:6, turn back to Isaiah 11:6. We get a prophecy about the, about the day of the Lord. Isaiah 11:6. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. Now, I'm stop there for a second. You guys, I don't know if you know, I don't really get into the world stuff that much, but a brother in Christ did a video once talking about there's this, I forgot what could, like project that supposedly went back in time and changed history and changed the word of God. And instead of saying the lions shall dwell with the lamb, it says wolf. It used to say lion. Here's the thing, brothers and sisters in Christ. It always said wolf. You know where you heard lion? From Hollywood TV programs. Programming. You heard it in Hollywood movies. You heard it in TV, Hollywood TV shows. You heard probably people on the news. Uh, you read it in books. Not this, not the Word of God, but man-made books. They kept throwing that phrase at us left and right, and then they come out with this whole scientific experiment that supposedly changes the past and says, look, it should be lions. No, it's called brainwashing. If you stayed in the Word of God like a lot of us have, we're like, it always said wolf. I don't know what you're talking about. It always said wolf. We're not deceived. If you stay in your book like the Bible says, 2 Timothy 2.15, uh, that word I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee, you take this word and you keep hiding in your heart. You stay in this book every day. It's harder for the lost world to deceive you. But a lot of the brethren, that these false, I'm sorry, about brethren, false converts, professing Christians that like to take the title Christian for themselves, that go to they go to church battle buildings once a week. They don't know their Bible for nothing. They just sit there with their Bible and listen to some man uh, talk and yap yap yap, tell a great story. You know, they tell some good jokes, they get some laughs and everything, and then they go back to their worldly life, carnally minded, walking after the flesh. They have no clue what the Bible says, so when something comes out and says, hey, that changed, they'll buy it. Why? Because they couldn't find the Gospel of Luke without an index. They don't know the Bible. They're clueless. Okay? Stay in your Word. Stay in the Word of God. It's not your Word. 
Make it your word. Hide it in your heart. Take God's word, hide it in your heart, and live it. Okay. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. It goes back to being like it was before the flood, when man had dominion over A child leads him. Man has dominion over him. They're friendly, and they're herbivores. This is where I get the herbivore part. I believe it's all going back to the before the flood. Let's keep reading. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw, like the ox. And the suck... Sucking child shall play on a hole of an asp. There we got the snake. Poison the snake, and a little child's playing with it. And the and the wean child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. Today, if you try to mess with uh, chickens, like I have a chicken right now that's trying to set on some eggs, and I said, okay, I'm going to give you a few eggs, but I have to keep checking under her to make sure that she doesn't have extra eggs, because if too many eggs get under there, she ends up breaking a lot of them, and she'll abandon it. And the other thing is, um, anytime I go under to grab those spare eggs that aren't marked, she, she snaps at me. Don't mess with me or my den. Don't mess with me or my den. But I have to. <clears throat> but here it's saying that when it gets back to before the flood, I reach in there. The chicken's like, okay, how's it going? If you mess with other animals' dens, they go crazy. But not in the day of the Lord. It goes back to before the flood. They shall not hurt nor destroy an eh in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covereth the sea. Okay. Isaiah 65, 25 reads, The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the bullock. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. Remember the, the curse that was put on the serpent in the Garden of Eden. And the dust shall be the serpent's meat. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. In the day of the Lord, it will go back to being before the flood. Man will have dominion over animals, and they will not fear them, and they will also eat herbs and greens. That's why I believe that, brother says Christ, because when you get to the day of the Lord, it turns all the way back to before the flood. It's like turning it back to the beginning. And Jesus Christ is ruling and reigning, and there's true peace all over the earth. And that includes with the animals. When our God reigns. How many are looking forward to that? I'm looking forward for that next adventure. Okay? But I wanted to do this study. I started out with something simple as uh, why the animals were... Uh, Noah was able to keep the animals calm. It's because God was keeping them calm. And God put them in the authority of Noah. They were friendly, they were under the dominion of men, and they ate herbs. That's how they were easily taken care of. Okay, that's what I believe. And like I said, you get to the day of the Lord, that's how it gets me my belief for before the flood. Things start going back to being the way they were as far as with the animals and with the health of mankind before the flood. And they could live longer. Right now, man's years is 120. I looked up online, and it's like 111 is the oldest men to living today. It's 111. I think one was 112. But they, don't, they can't seem to break that 120. They can't seem to break God's command. Okay? God's law. God's rules. Okay? God said 120. Man's life will be 120. You won't live past 120 today. But in the day of the Lord, I believe you will. Because it goes back to before the flood. The conditions are before the flood. Okay? So um, hopefully you followed me along in this. It's just a, a study about animals, brothers and sisters Christ, and going around the Bible and talking about animals. Okay, Animals, then, now, and then that day. So I will leave you with this. I'm praying for you, brothers and sisters Christ. Please pray for me in these uh, dark days. It's easy to get scared of what's going on in the world. I'll be making some other videos trying to encourage the brethren about you know, staying, uh, keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ and that catching away by the life that you're living. Okay, We're going to get into some videos about that. So I wanted to end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.